Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is my last wish, Costco's liquor license, <laughs> Keitel's horn polisher, <laughs> Valis Finn, Zavala's favorite outside of Keitel's space rhino parts, <laughs> Drifter's left hand, if you know, you know. Gambit's champion and Tanik's secret lover, Josh Finney. <laughs> uh, so, hi, Josh. <laughs> Drifter's left hand, I'm going to make a, an educated guess, came from John. But I also feel like John's the one who made the quip about uh, no, my, uh, not, my Costco actually. shopping habits. Oh, that's a popular. That's a popular inside joke. Yeah, join the Tower Casual. We talk about uh, how I shop at Costco on a Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah, hashtag Josh yeah. got buzzed at Costco. Um, been a great week. Great week, knowing that that was the uh, the dominating topic for uh, Sunday and Monday was. Uh, I can't. I got a little lit at brunch. Came home, went to sleep. <laughs> woke up Monday morning to see. Uh, a lot of messages um, about uh, Josh's buzz at Costco. If Des- if Discord had a trending feature for your server, that would have been trending number one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, these are all, uh... It's okay, Josh. It's okay. I had a few too many you. cocktails at brunch. <laughs> oh man. Those, <laughs> that's okay. And then I walked across look, the street to go to Costco. Look, Josh, you're fault. Look, Josh, you're a 30 year old man. You can you can have a you can have a little I mean, sippy listen, sip and go to Costco bad. if you, you need to. Okay. World, so that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> you should see me at the happiest place on earth. Oh, uh, you got Easter Sunday, Ooh. 2017. Mm-hmm. Oh, Easter 17. Get a little blue moon. I. Uh, <laughs> I rode the monorail from Epcot to the transportation at Ticket Center about 13 times around trip trying to sober up. To the point where uh, one of the monorail attendants just stuck his head inside the car when he saw me and was like, you you good, man? I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm great. I just can't feel my legs. Can't feel my legs, dude. <laughs> this is great. I gotta summon the strength to make it to a bus or to an Uber at some point. Mm, that's so funny oh it's so good i uh yeah anyways i'm i'm coming up with some sort of contest for our discord for nicknames for you look in in the month of october okay here's here's what i'm gonna do the best nick nickname each week i will buy one person each uh that those costumes one per week so join the discord uh Go to the podcast channel in the Discord and leave your best nicknames for Josh. <laughs> and so here's here's what I'll do. I'll read the five best ones of the week, okay? And then Josh will pick his favorite of those five, and that person will get a free, a free cosmetic costume on your platform of choice. R.I.P. Stadia. Stadia. Because, you know, <laughs> Rip Stadia. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, to I was going to make a lot of Stadia that, jokes tonight, and then I remember that we literally just on did Stadia. a poll on this where we were like bashing Stadia, and we found out that one of our listeners plays on Stadia. So, uh, I'm sorry, man. We're going to make fun Not of Stadia anymore. <laughs> yeah, we are because uh, the Twab was. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, you should have just called it a day. You should have just started the weekend <laughs> early. I saw the. Uh, the patch note preview yeah not patch notes patch note preview uh Mm. screen capped on my feed and i was like oh well cool we got patch notes oh that's that seems a little short surely that can't be the whole twab that's what is captioned this is literally the whole twab i thought i was gonna have some light reading material while i was getting my state inspection done for my car today and you know sat down opened it up and was like oh it's that's all it is like that's literally all it is. The yep. prime gaming section was longer. Mm-hmm. 
got to go get those year yep. one cosmetics it, again, it really, man. It really um, was. Yeah. Just on weeks like this, can we just like not even have a Schwab? Like I won't even be offended if you guys take a couple weeks off. If it's going to be like this piddly, just like <laughs> this meeting could have been a tweet. So yeah, yeah it's yeah, bad. It was, it, uh... it, it's real bad. Mm -hmm. yeah this twab was uh very, very not great so very uh, we do we luckily great. do have some topics tonight to talk about but uh thank you uh google coming in clutch today uh by deciding to axe an entire platform uh may have saved part of the show but it, in all seriousness though um <laughs> on, on the stadia topic i do feel really bad for the developers who are there um stadia has been a punchline for anybody who understands the industry since the second it got announced um, also, the writing was on the wall when Phil Harrison was revealed to be in charge yep. of Stadia. Yeah, because uh, he's literally uh, shut down uh, what, three see. platforms he, at this point. He was on pretty much killed four platforms. Was he? Was Phil Harrison on Sega? Sega? I didn't think he was Dreamcast. on Dreamcast. Okay, Dreamcast. so he's responsible for Dreamcast, PlayStation Three, Xbox One, and now Stadia. That is just oh man. Yep. Uh, my favorite, my favorite tweet of the day what was a Jeff resume. tweeting out a picture of uh, Phil Harrison and saying, "Well done, Agent Forty Seven. Uh, that was genuinely my favorite reaction to this news. Uh, just two months ago, Stadia official uh, Twitter account, their PR team, was saying anybody who was uh, saying that Stadia was going to die or was being uh, discontinued was a liar. And uh, well, here we are, exactly two months later." developers are caught completely unaware we saw uh, developers saying like i have a game that's scheduled to launch in november uh one developer has a game that's scheduled to launch tomorrow i think and now it's not happening um and they have no idea what to do now mm -hmm. like they're like we don't know if we're going to be reimbursed by yeah. google or not and google's track records track record suggests that they're not going to so and like Google, Google came out and made this uh this huge sweeping declaration that they'll refund all games and hardware purchase. The, the developers were like, great, it better not be coming out of our pockets because we're not giving that money back. I sure wouldn't at that point. I right. mean, we all knew this was coming from day one, though. I mean, like not even six months in, we were already say you know doom and gloom. I mean. Even if you didn't think it was coming day one, like when uh, uh, what's her name left uh, to form Haven, right? Uh, who who's who's the developer uh, Jade Raven. to form Haven? Yeah, Jade Raven. When she left, like that's when like when they started well, shutting well, down she, their first. She was the chief. She was the chief of their you know? exclusives. So Jade Raymond leaves. Um, yeah. We now know that some of the some of the games that were supposed to be exclusives are Hideo Kojima's upcoming cloud game for Xbox, uh, High on Life, and uh, 2K's game The Quarry. All three of those were supposed to be Stadia games, published exclusively for Stadia, mm -hmm. and Google just wasn't going to stick with it, so they went out and sought other publishing opportunities basically the, the kojima i should say take the kojima stuff with a grain of salt because like we don't actually know what happened there but all the reporting suggests that he wanted to do a cloud-based game because kojima likes to do weird things and he was going to do it with stadia and well he wanted to do it with sony sony said it was too expensive and they weren't going to do that also they don't have the cloud infrastructure and then he approached stadia he never signed a formal letter with them or like an agreement or anything and that went downhill pretty quickly so then that's when microsoft swooped in and was like hey we have all the tech that you want we hired the people you wanted and we'll make it happen for you um so we'll see like if anything comes of that but i mean if that and high on life end up being any good as well as you have to think that haven's first game is going to be the game they were working on at stadia you have to think that it's going to be their first game. If those games end up being uh -huh. bangers, I think we're going to sit here and just be like, <laughs> be laughing. Uh, the most interesting question to me now is, yeah, what happens to, um, 
Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 was when the service got announced. That was the big thing. Like, oh, it's only coming to PC and Stadia. That's it. Like, it's got an exclusivity agreement with Stadia. Like, not just for early access, but, like, for the full release and everything. The game didn't even make it the full release on Stadia. Yeah. Well, let's... So, <laughs> I mean, somebody will I've been thinking it about that. Right. I actually don't think it'll happen. Um, I think at this... No, I think at this point, Larian will be like, you know? fuck it, we're putting it on PlayStation and Xbox. Like, they're just both going to get it at this point. They're going to want to make their money. God knows what these developers that had exclusivity deals are going through right now. Um, they were one of the only ones that had not terminated their deal as far as I... Or, excuse me, um, their deal had not been terminated as far as I'm aware. Um, but that's going to be one like the second that it's terminated. Uh, it's because I mean it's it's terminated now, of course. Uh, if we don't hear something by like next right. Monday, I'd be surprised. Like confirmation from Larry and of yeah, it's coming. Like yeah. this game isn't releasing till next year. We got plenty of time to optimize it for other platforms. Like let's go. <laughs> or hey, it'll be a couple months late, but we're gonna get it out on PC. If ironically, this probably helps them with the development process. They can probably push it to PC quicker now, and then say, "All right, and console will be yeah. like late 2023 or something." That wouldn't surprise anyone. This is a game that most people are gonna play on PC anyways. Um, so cool, awesome. Yeah. Baldur's Gate Three is finally free, <laughs> but. As to how this concerns yeah. Destiny, let's let's finally tie it into the whole point that we're talking about <laughs> this. Um, Lightfall will not be coming to Stadia, obviously. All Stadia services will be shutting down on the 18th of January. Very <laughs> random day, too, by the way. Like. Yeah. I don't. Uh, yeah. Well, isn't that like the anniversary date of Stadia? I don't think so. Didn't it come out in January? I think it released in I think it released mm. in November. It'll barely no, be that three years. It'll beta, barely be three unquote, years right? old. Like uh, early That's access. So uh, it, obviously, Lightfall is not coming yeah. out. Um, Bungie themselves, like every other developer, was completely unaware that this announcement was being made today. Uh, the implication is that Bungie found out, like everybody else did, mm. via a tweet. Um. <laughs> So Bungie, Bungie, uh, Stadia informed Bungie that Lightfall yeah, was not coming to Stadia basically. today. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it is worth noting. I don't think in the announced platforms, I don't know that Stadia was actually announced as a platform for Lightfall. I don't remember off the top of my head if it was in the marketing or not. Um, and I, I do think that some bigger publishers were probably aware because like Ubisoft, when they announced Assassin's Creed Mirage a few weeks ago, conspicuously like we a lot of us noted it at the time like oh it's not coming to stadia like ubisoft was an early champion of it odyssey was one of the first major games being tested for it uh before it was even called stadia it was uh the first in browser game that was being tested on it on a large scale um but this is particularly noteworthy because when stadia was announced uh it was a huge deal that destiny was going to come to it and it was uh it was right around uh, Shadow. I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I have to say something real quick yeah. before before you before you continue. There's literally there's literally an ad on Stadia right now. It says launch and play Destiny Two Lightfall in Oof. seconds on February twenty eighth. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. That is. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. It literally has it. It literally has its own page. That's. And it says try try Stadia That's now. Rough. It says, "Yep, it's right here." Stadia Stadia.google.com slash They gave game everyone who got Lightfall. Stadia that year. Everyone got the quote founders pack of Destiny, which meant you got Curse of Osiris, you got Warmind, you got Forsaken, and you got Shadowfall, Shadowkeep, not Shadowfall. God. Um, and I think you got the mm -hmm. season pass for Shadow Keep as well. Oh my God! It oh Jesus Christ! It really mm. is. I can't believe that this is a thing. God damn, that's embarrassing. Yeah. I see you that can you can still buy the bundle. Is still buyable. Why is it buyable? 
Oh my god, dude! I just oh, what a disaster! What an absolute disaster, dude! Oh my god! Holy like shit. I get that you can't like delete every page, right? But like, there's got to be like an so overall bad. purchase button, that's right? So that bad. you can just toggle off and I... onto the website. And, like, we've joked about it. Like, we feel like they've kind of gone around the sun with partnerships now. Like, there was that, there was the Activision deal that they made with uh, Sony. And then, not, only a few months after getting out of that, they made a yeah. deal with Stadia. The next year, they were at Xbox's big summer showcase for Series X, promoting that it was coming to Game Pass and that Beyond Light would be included with Game Pass. And, you know, now, of course, Bungie is part of Sony. So it's like, damn. We are we going our back for round two with everything? Like I think the most immediate question now has to be what are you gonna do for a cloud-based destiny experience? Because it's clear that players want that. Like there were a lot of players, myself included, who were very upset that it was taken off of Xbox Cloud Gaming. Uh there are genuinely it is I think mm-hmm. it is the most played game on Stadia, and it's not even close. Yeah, well, yeah. it said it said that it still has like five thousand yeah. concurrent, like which I mean is not players, a lot. Like but for Stadia, players, that's probably Stadia. a lot. Um, I mean, that's that's the most. That's the most. There, anybody, there were a few people like, talking in our Discord game today Stadia, about how like, they, they like say. using it to log on and like do bounties or do seasonal activities, go to Zer or things like that. And like, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. blame them. That's what I used cloud gaming for. Um, when I had the backbone, you know, it became a much better experience, like right at the end of its lifetime on there. You have to think that Bungie is probably going to Sony being like, there's two routes that we'd like to go with this three, probably three, actually, I should say three. Number one, let's get back. Let's get the free to play version, uh, a Fortnite style deal with cloud gaming. Let's just put it on there. I know you guys don't want it because it's Xbox cloud, but let's just get it on there. Let's, let's just do it. Let's get it on there. Let, we'll try and optimize it for like PlayStation Cloud as well, because there's some PlayStation games that can be played via the cloud um, on a browser. It's kind of janky, but you can do it via remote play. Mm-hmm. Uh, remote play, not cloud, I guess I should say. Number two, I would be shocked if they weren't exploring making this work on uh, NVIDIA's GeForce platform. And three, you have to think mm-hmm. they're going to officially optimize it for Steam Deck now. You have to think they're going to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, you saw, you saw that patent that came out that said they were trying that they patented like yeah, a specific I think, set of touch. I controls, think that that's right? going to be for the mobile game that for they're making. Mobile. Though I don't think that'll be for Destiny itself. I think it's going to be for a much simpler game. Because let, let's let's be real, playing Destiny with touch controls would yeah. be exhausting at the very least. <laughs> I tried I to I played, play I played the on Vita mission for a while. on Vita okay, and damn near through my Vita through the drywall. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, uh, uh-uh. oh, man, uh, it's where's Vita two? Dying with the great peripherals in the sky. It's being joined by the Stadia controller and PSVR one. I just side so, like side tangent though do you think like xbox and playstation are considering it no. with the success of steam deck and obviously switch no. do you think no. they're like i don't think xbox needs to. xbox something? has like so thoroughly tried to build the cloud platform that i don't think they give a fuck i think honestly xbox would like the solution that apple tried to give them but they just don't want to do it in the way that apple presented it to them i think they would like to be able to put an app on the phone or on a tablet and let you download a couple of games have like a certain amount of memory set aside to download a few core games that you can play you know online or offline or whatever and you can stream the rest apple just wanted each Mm -hmm. individual game to go through certification and that's never going to happen they're not going to send four or five hundred games through certification Mm -hmm. if they can ever get around to that then yeah. yeah i think that's clearly they microsoft clearly had the infrastructure to do that and they pretty much said so in those court filings um i think also with logitech's right. cloud-based platform that came out this week or last week um that has a heavy emphasis on cloud gaming and i forget what the other plat on uh, xbox cloud and something else i forget what the other one was um it might have been geforce stuff as well um I think that's probably as close as they're willing to get. Like, you can pretty easily get Game Pass up and running on your Steam Deck as well, from what I hear. Um, 
I see, I don't see Microsoft yeah. wanting to do that because they have a hard enough time getting people to buy in the platforms and they've made such a huge deal of hardware is not where we see the future. We see the future being like on everything. They're going to be on, they're going to mm-hmm. be on smart TVs. Like yeah. why, why would I, if, if I'm an executive at Microsoft, mm-hmm. I would be sitting there going, I'd rather keep dumping into this and making a great mobile experience with things like the backbone and even like with controller mounts, like you've got a great experience going there. You just need American and, you know, European broadband to start getting there, start getting with the program, which is one thing I will say, I think Stadia did good. Stadia had pretty low latency. Um, And they do note in their press release that Stadia tech will continue to be used and like licensed out to other companies i see sony absolutely being first in line to try and buy those patents um i would because that's that probably saves you like two three years of trying to develop it on your own and instantly gives you a cloud platform not instantly but it'll give Uh you a cloud platform and maybe half the time to compete with microsoft um i I think that as far as handouts go like that's that's nintendo nintendo has hit such a home run with the switch that you you can't duplicate that the steam deck is a slam dunk mm-hmm. for other reasons um like steam deck and it appeals to a lot of pc gamers mm-hmm. obviously because they get their, their library on the go it appeals to me i don't have a pc i don't want to build a gaming pc but i can get a dock to dock it to my yeah. tv <clears throat> cool if you're tell me i can use that with my xbox controller yeah. i'm out <laughs> yeah i'm i'm I've been thinking about getting a Steam Deck just to play mm-hmm. the games that I can't play on Switch mobile. Mine would basically be a Game you know, Pass machine, and I have zero shame in admitting it. It's just <laughs> and a Destiny machine. Yeah, I mean, if if they optimize Des, if they, so optimize the, I mean, there Destiny there are workarounds that it. are not going to get you banned. Like Bungie developers themselves are even using them, um, I know. and have said, you know, we're not going to ban anybody for using this workaround. Uh, I would do it. I would just be hesitant to do. Um, obviously any kind of like pvp activity because you will be put into the steam pool uh, that would be the one thing for me yeah <laughs> well josh if you oh, know yeah me, we've you got, know, we've got flaw, just, the, the flawless to play some PvP over here. destiny um <laughs> speaking of flawless yeah. real quick uh, flawless. shout out joe wilson colonel panic our very own colonel panic went to the lighthouse for the first time this weekend yeah, he texted me Monday morning and was like, uh, check it out. Ooh. I uh, I had a few hours to spare this morning, and so I played some trials, and uh, he went and got that adept bow. So uh, congrats, to, congrats to you for making Ooh. it for the first time, Joe. Um, I, I got to think job, that Joe. you're not going to do another cloud platform, like another handheld, if you're one of these companies. Like Sony's done two, two handhelds that failed to take off at this point. They've clearly decided that they're investing in vr yeah. um i think ironically now i think is when you could get away with doing a vita 2 if but you would have to pack so much power it would have to be more powerful mm-hmm. than the switch is the problem yeah it would have to be more oh it, I, would, I would argue it had to be deck, better I than the high-end steam deck it would just it would be so expensive yeah, yeah. Well, i mean that would, would be like so that would be expensive the to make that and to get things off that would be the floor. I just, now I don't see it happening. Um, I cloud cloud is the way of the future. Yep, especially with them. I think they're content PC just to now, get that like... money. If if you want to play their games mobily, go get a Steam Deck, or you know they'll develop an app here in a year or two with the Stadia patents. But um, it, it's clear that's the one thing they were pretty caught off guard by was that they didn't plan on Microsoft. Uh-huh. basically saying hey cloud is ready before the launch of series x um i think that really threw them for a loop and then uh-huh. just how they've integrated it into the entire platform uh, i mean i don't even have to download my games to play them now i can play them while they're downloading it's great uh-huh right and like you can play you can play games to test them out and then if you want to continue right. playing you just download i, I do that with my like indies a lot a few times. um i um, went from having my switch being in my bedroom a couple of years ago to now I keep my backbone controller in my nightstand and I just like pop it on my phone. If I want to sit there and like play a little mm-hmm. something before I go to bed or whatever, that's when I do a lot of my indie gaming. Um, but I just, I I've gotten to the point where like my switch is being used less and less for indie gaming now. 
and it's becoming more it's becoming more of what it was when i first bought it Uh oh it's a nintendo console like i'm only playing first party stuff and it's only the stuff i have to play Uh yeah uh yeah splatoon's great i haven't played nearly as much splatoon as i've wanted it came out three weeks ago i think i've played it twice um i really want to play more splatoon but uh destiny though i think like stadia shuttering is a it's a it's a big deal like uh joe blackburn's been pretty clear about how and i mean in the past also luke and mark were pretty big on it they used it as a big development tool during the pandemic it really helped them out um and when the partnership was originally announced that was part of the deal was they were using the stadia stuff on the back end to share things via the cloud um, and they said, you know, working remote, that really helped them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stadia did. So that's why, like, this was shocking to the Bungie team. Um, the writing, I feel, has been on the wall for quite a while, though. And I feel like steps have probably already been taken internally to not be doing stuff. But, I mean, if the tech is going to continue to exist on the back end, like, maybe they can keep using them, like, just as a development studio. Who knows? Um, and I would say, like, their experiences, yeah. if they relay those to, like, Jim Ryan and Herman Holst may speed up them trying to acquire some of those Stadia patents or at least like a long-term licensing deal for the tech. Like license the tech, but build your own in the meantime. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Yeah, because you, I mean, even if you license the tech, you can like I, almost reverse engineer yeah. it to like see what, you know, and I, I, I know there's a lot of like... yeah. Well, and that, that's that's the the latency too, patent is the I mean, big one to me like... that I think that people are going to want to get a hold of. Um, I expect mm-hmm. Microsoft to come in swinging, but you know, Microsoft and Google hate each other, especially after Microsoft just took you know a stance against Apple yeah. in a lawsuit. But I mean, Google doesn't exact. I don't know. It's like right. the 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 big three don't really like each other, and I think it's going to kind of turn into anybody but Amazon. It's probably the approach. We had to be reminded today that Amazon Luna still exists, mm-hmm. by the way. Saw that in a press release. Um, forgot that was genuinely a thing. Yeah. I got into the beta and then I never thought about it afterwards. Um, never had any exclusive games. I mean, it's just these yeah. these companies just want to make a quick buck off gamers. It's like, what do you, what do you not understand about we want to play with our yeah. friends? I remember. <laughs> right. I remember like. When Luna was first yep. announced, like all yep. of my Amazon boxes were wrapped in that purple tape, and then like now, <laughs> like I haven't, I yeah, totally no, forgot, n- totally forgot. Lord, now they want me to Rings watch of Lord Power of the Rings. I like Rings. Of Power. <laughs> apparently, I, it's apparently a very unpopular opinion, but I really like Rings of Power. Yeah. Um, when it comes down to another like service though you, you gotta think i think GeForce and cloud gaming have to be kind of at the forefront like they're gonna be like hey if you really want to get if you want to get these players in here you know those those few thousand players like you know that's pr- those are probably the approaches you want to take are to try and push them towards another service because clearly they were using it for the streaming aspect not because of the mm-hmm. or like because of convenience like sure i'm i'm sure most of those people probably have a console that they can play mm-hmm. on but i don't know yeah but, maybe uh uh, I was gonna say maybe maybe Sony will add it to its PlayStation Stars program as a oh my god as a along offering. with the uh, the better customer service. <laughs> it's unbel unfucking real yeah. unfucking real. I I'm Ugh. curious to see what solutions Bungie comes up with because they said they'll have a solution in the near future for Stadia gamers, and I'm a little interested to see how that's gonna work. Um, it's got it's got to be a Steam or a or an Epic Games. I mean, thing, they're right? already I kind mean, of shoving you. They've, like, we joke that they the partnership roulette. Like Epic Games is in that too. Uh, I completely forgot about the Epic Games deal. Like I think uh-huh. now it may be slightly more complicated because the Epic deal was clearly signed before Sony bought them. Um, I wonder what happens yeah. now because clearly anything that happens now they're under the Sony umbrella. Like, they may not be like, oh, we're going to lump you in with Santa Monica and Naughty Dog, but they are still a Sony studio, ultimately, even if they are retaining a lot of their independence. Um, I don't know uh-huh. what, I don't know really what to think about it. So we'll, we'll wait and see how it develops. I doubt we hear anything in the next couple of weeks about Destiny plans. Um, if it suddenly shows back up on uh, Game Pass, though, <laughs> you know why. 
So I, I do expect Microsoft yeah. to probably approach <laughs> Sony and Bungie and be like, hey, guys, just put the free to play one on there. You guys are still going to make the money off of us. <clears throat> you'll still make yeah. the money you're you, like it's still it's got a massive yeah. install base and now those people are just going to want to play more and maybe you rope a few more in yeah well i mean fortnite fortnite is already on the uh the cloud gaming thing for xbox yeah that's th- and that Pass. that's that's an you interesting know? one because you can't so, I mean, play it via cloud on your console you have to actually download it on your console i mean maybe you even do a deal like that for destiny like well you have to download and you, you have to download everything like just put the new light experience just give them access to the base thing and then like oh they'll be like oh i have to go buy the expansions oh i need to buy some silver like you want them to spend time in this game like more time spent in game equals more money spent in game like that's how mmos work it's cynical but that's mm. how they work so you have to think some sort of deal like that is coming eventually. Yeah. But we're going to move on, Corey. Yeah. We're going to move on. Well. <clears throat> yeah, I I have to say what I have get, to say get, one get thing. Get your about final Stadia digs in at Stadia before, before we get out of here. I have It's it's not a dig actually. It's it's a compliment. I actually like as much as Stadia the idea mm-hmm. is kind of like kind of sucks. I do like their logo as a, as a graphic designer. I do love their logo and I do like their choice of color palette, but I mean, no, you know, that's not going to yeah, well, sell mean, you having no first party but... support for three years also won't sell you anything. Uh, moving right along though. We, uh, we had an interesting conversation in the, in the discord earlier today. Um, and I'm really glad we had this conversation because it relates to our loan patch note that we have to talk about here in the Schwab. Uh, this pat- patch note preview to alleviate some of the pressure in acquiring season of plunder weapon patterns. The double perk weapon spoils crew upgrade will now give you a deep sight modded weapon. The first time you focus a weapon each week, uh, the deep sight modded weapon from the hidden compartment crew upgrade will now appropriately refresh at the weekly reset. Um, that will be in the hot fix next week. Um, I believe we also had one other, thing that was addressed um it was addressed via twitter let me find it real fast um bungee help i'll find it bungee bungee help me uh oh nope it's about something else never mind i'm completely wrong i just i can't believe that this wasn't even brought up in the twab but it's another issue entirely um, we were having a discussion about the ease of getting red border weapons. Um, for me, the red border weapons have been a source of uh, grief and annoyance, uh, both last season and this season. I, I was less, I think I'm less annoyed by last season, knowing that I have you know, the rest of this season and all of next season to acquire them. But it makes me irritated that we don't know how weapon patterns are going to be treated when their seasons are taken out of the game i mean like judging by the splicer weapons and season of the lost weapons and chosen weapons like those occasionally show back up at Zer, but that's it like how else am i supposed to to get those patterns to be able to craft them like making patterns you know have an element of fomo feels like really bad game design this was supposed to alleviate the pressure on getting a god roll, and instead we're sitting here panicking that we might not be able to get the pattern in time, but also we might not be able to get it once the season is taken out of the game in a few months. Um, so one of the solutions that we were kind of coming up with was, what if dismantling the weapon, the red border weapon, still gave you 20% like normal, but dismantling a normal version of the weapon gave you like 5%. Or something. So you're always working towards it. Because I can't tell you how many fucking linear fusion rifles I've gotten this season. And only like two of them have had a pattern. But I've probably dismantled about a dozen of them. Like, just let me let me get progress towards everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... I th- Yeah, that's a... That's a good solution. So okay. I don't know what it's I was okay. about to say there. I, I, I don't, I don't know what else you, you're but... supposed to do, though, because the red border system is just, like, we addressed it a few weeks ago. I'm not going to go in on it again tonight. But it's it's poor design. It's very poor design, like, that we're having to go in and patch this stuff mid-season now. Like, 
we knew that there was an issue with the first catch crash of the week not dropping the red border. We've known that for two weeks now. Um, and I'm glad this is getting fixed because I got tired of doing them and not getting mm-hmm. them. But then uh, to have to go and change one of the perks entirely. Now I have to like kind of no like no bullshit. I have to readjust how I'm going to do my upgrades now going forward to like make sure I maximize the red borders I'm going to get. Naturally, I'm only going to get them for the ones that I've already, you know, gotten. Um, when it's the random drop for the random drop at least with the double perk one you can select which one you want and that does make it a little bit easier because i'm at at least two patterns on all the weapons i think and i can craft two of them right now but we know that some of the challenges coming up if you go on break if you go on the break tech app you can see the future challenges have been data mined one of the ones that's going to launch next week is get uh three weapons i believe to level three crafted weapons to level 10 this season and i believe they have to be plunder weapons and then one that's going to hit in week 10 is get two crafted weapons from this season to level 20 so that's when i'll be crafting my scout rifle and my sidearm is to get those just other than that i Mm -hmm. i it, sh- yes. it feels bad going from a season where we had like three or four guaranteed opportunities a week to get red borders to there was one guaranteed one and it didn't even work right. So it was so bad they're going to have to patch another way in next week. I I don't even know what this I don't even know what to say to that. Like cool. Uh, I hope I get my patterns. Like thankfully, there's only two or three weapons I really care about being able to craft. Um, and for me, that's, you know, it's the sidearm, it's the scout mm-hmm. rifle, and I would, I can't even say the linear fusion, maybe the shotgun. The shoddy, like, might be my third. I struggle to think of a third yeah. one. Yeah. Don't need the, don't need the yeah, LMG, I don't, don't need the linear. I don't know, I couldn't um, think of anything. That's the other three. I'm completely drawing a blank on what the sixth weapon is at this point. SMG, the SMG. Is it the uh, which one? No, I said, said sidearm, said scout rifle, already, and shotgun. I think. Um, SMG, LMG, and linear. Yeah, uh, the SMG, uh, the stasis SMG, okay. um, which I like, but it just doesn't stack up against something like Callus Mini Tool. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. It no. ju- it continues to bother me, yeah. pretty greatly. Yeah, I don't really like, I don't really like any of the weapons this season. To be honest, like I love the season itself, but I don't really care for any of the weapons right now. With with vault shot, with vault shot, it's probably it's the funnest. That's for sure. Vault shot and dragonfly are amazing perks on that gun. I'm really I want to I want to craft it just because I want to get enhanced vault shot on both that and on the sidearm. The sidearm, I'm well aware there's better options, but it's just fun. Yeah. It's like Drang was last season. Everything blew up. Yeah. Now they all just get electrocuted, and it's a lot of fun seeing all your lightning chained together. Especially when you have certain aspects and fragments turned on, it can make those guns really fun. And they really play into the arc power fantasy well, I think. So I'm very curious to see what an SMG will eventually look like with something like Volk Sh- Volt Shot on it. Um, that's going to be absolutely wild. Yeah. For that or an auto rifle. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do kind of agree that you don't need to be able to craft every single weapon, but I think like being able to craft your favorite weapons is important. And I understand the sentiment that a couple in our community had yeah. about, well, you know, you still got another season after this. Yes, but like with the holidays coming up, with there being another season, I don't want to like still be working on stuff from this past season. Also, like God forbid, I want to take a break to play God of War or uh, you know some of the other games. Like uh, Final Fantasy is coming out two weeks before Christmas. I want to play Crisis Core. I want to play High on Life. After that, like in January, you know you've got you've got Dead Space. We've got the Persona games coming uh, to Xbox and PlayStation. Finally. You know, the re-release of 3, of Golden, of 5 Royale. Scorn is coming. Uh, Plague Tale is coming. There's so much stuff coming in the next couple of months between now and Lightfall that I'm like, uh, I actually plan on taking kind of like a sizable break <laughs> probably in the, 
around the, the Christmas holidays from yeah. Destiny just to like kind of like recharge my batteries a little mm. bit going into like if I don't do it then then it's definitely going to be at the end of January beginning of February uh, I've got a week long vacation booked before Lightfall comes out yeah. um, to just get away for a while oh good you booked it before uh, I booked, you booked, I booked it, before it before this time so that that was part of the joke when we were waiting to see when Lightfall was going to come out was oh god like I was practically on my hands and knees saying do not launch it the first week of February uh, I'm taking a vacation. We're going on vacation for my girlfriend's 30th yeah. birthday. And I were going, her best friend and her husband are coming with us. And we're like, and then I was like, oh shit, I already booked this. And I put the deposit down and uh, Lightfall may be coming out the day we're supposed to fly back in. And I was really scared. But yeah. thankfully, it's coming out a few weeks later. So we'll be good, but that's going to consume that's, that's March gone right there for me. So. Yeah. I mean, March is gone for me and I would say May May is absolutely gone gone because of Legend of Zelda. Because Starfield is likely launching between these two. I am absolutely terrified right now, but like when I think about it like that and like, like I said, like the constant annoyance in my, the back of my brain about like, we don't know how weapon patterns are going to be handled when you take the season out. Can I just like buy the patterns then from Mm -hmm. the, from the vault or something? Like, how's that going to work? Like, do I need to like, can I pay you in prisms? I have a hundred prisms. Can I pay you in those? Are they gonna? Are they gonna? I mean, do do you think they add those weapons to the kiosk where you get the no, exotic stuff? I don't think they'll add the weapons, weapons, but like maybe they add a way for you to buy the pattern from there. I could see that being a thing. Like, however many patterns you had ahead of time, like dictates how many you can get there. If not, that the world loot pool is gonna have to get bigger. The world, the world loot pool sucks. Well, maybe dick the right uh... now. it sucks dick. Yeah. Well, maybe the enclave. Maybe they have some sort of. They're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to figure something out. And I like. I hate to sound like you know a Kevin over here, but I'd like to know what the solution is gonna be before fucking Christmas. Like, I would like to know because that's gonna, like, no offense, that's gonna dictate (laughs) how I spend my time in that final season. Like. Am I going to have to spend it still chasing weapons that I want from Haunted that I haven't finished, which I am about to have to start looping back and doing runs through the fucking Leviathan again, because I only have one of the four, I only have one of the five patterns for my current favorite shotgun in the game. It's not even close to being the best, but I really like it, and I really want that enhanced incandescent on it. Like... I want that. I want to have, yeah. I want to be able to craft a beloved if I need it down the line. Cause knowing my luck, the, if I ignore beloved, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to ignore beloved and we're going to be in a sniper meta for DPS all of a sudden. So I want to get a good beloved. I want to be able to craft yep. a beloved at will. I don't want to have to do it now. I want to be able to have one at will. And I just, I yeah. should not have FOMO over patterns for a game that I play all the time. Like, for as much as I play, I feel like it should be a little bit simpler to get these patterns. And, like, I will say, I feel like I complain about the patterns, but I think they've been a little bit more generous this season than in past seasons. And maybe that's just because I'm playing so fucking much Catch Crash and Expeditions right now that I'm not noticing. But it's, like, definitely the ratio of time spent in activities to Red Borders is not evening out. But if that's going to be the only place you give me seasonal weapons now... Is from doing seasonal activities, you need to up that red bar drop rate by like 25% or something. I don't know what it's set to now, but I'm going to need it to... I, I want two things. I want to have an increase in red borders, and I want a knockout system. Once I've, fin- once I've gotten five red borders, stop giving me red borders of that weapon. It's not doing me any good. Just stop giving them to me. I don't know. It's crafting already needs a 2.0 and I really hope we get it with Lightfall because crafting was something I was really stoked for. We said it ahead of time that crafting was still going to probably be something aimed towards more hardcore players. I consider myself like on the higher end of like casual and like the lower end of like I treat this like super seriously. Like I'm kind of in like that prosumer area, I guess, like the mid-range player, like 
higher higher mid range is where I would consider myself. Like, okay, yeah, I can hang I can mm-hmm. hang in a day one raid. I may not get it done, but yeah. I can hang out in there. Uh, I can get through a few encounters and stuff. I can get my first p- few pieces of yeah. loot. Like I can I can do trials occasionally. I can do a flawless in trials. I can get my GM title. I can get my conqueror. Like I can nail the dungeon sight unseen first try. Things like that. And it's when I'm when I feel like I'm struggling to get these red borders. I think that's kind of a problem that they're not dropping with enough frequency. And like I play the seasonal activities. I'm like a lot of people. Like I actually enjoy the seasonal arenas. The Leviathan notwithstanding, I enjoy the seasonal arenas. Mm-hmm. But even that... E- Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I actually... Oh, I was going to say, I actually really, really I like just wish there was a Catch variety Crash to it. And the uh, three-person event. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wish I wish you didn't do the same one the whole week, right? I wish they kind of rotated them out now that they've all been done, you know? But... That's just uh... yeah. I I think that when you when you look at the seasonal activities, like I mean, we we've lamented these before. <laughs> Lament. Um, we we've bemoaned these before, um, ah. and I'm sure that we will again before Lightfall comes out. They desperately need a shake up, and I think why we like things like Catch Crash and Expedition so much is because they feel different than other activities that we've gotten to a large degree like they just feel fun they feel a little wackier being able to summon the uh the ai allies that really do like fuck all is still fun they have goofy names they're fun they have some goofy lore behind them um i enjoy that and like the whole like spider and mithrax and drifter dynamic is great throwing ido and aramis into the mix has been fun um it's a really wacky season in a way that, like, last season was super serious with the storyline. And the Leviathan was, like, not fun at all. I don't know a single person who enjoyed last season's activity on the Leviathan. It was fun for, like, ten minutes. And I was like, oh, God, this is all it's going to be. Like, there's no variety. Like, mm-hmm. At least with PsyOps. Again, another thing we were discussing in the Discord. Um, with PsyOps, at least, those missions get rotated into the vanguard playlist so like hopefully or i guess the battlegrounds did i don't know if the psyops will but i have to assume the psyops missions will get rotated in as well especially now that we have the confirmation that no more regions are being sunset unless they absolutely have to do it for some reason um i have to think that Mm -hmm. those three will probably make it in uh maybe the catch crash mission gets thrown in as a vanguard mission but uh, I guess that's a six-player mission. That probably won't happen. Yeah. The expeditions definitely aren't going to be thrown in. Um, so something, something's got to happen. You, you've got to... And I think it was Joe Asus yeah. who was saying this, like, we need more strikes put into the game, just straight up. Um, like, that's part of why people liked Chosen so much yeah. was we had a strike be part of the ending to that whole season. And I agree. I don't think we need to strike every season yeah. like that. I, I think that would take away from the specialness of it. I don't mind having a final mission, though. I think the final missions, like if it's something on the level of like the exorcism, that can be really fun. Um, like we we talked about season of the lost yeah. last year, and we talked about splicer. Or like like uh... those also had two different activities going on. You had six person activity, like the the well or the. Uh, override but you also had expunge and the shattered realm Mm -hmm. on top of that that's kind of how it feels this season too yeah Mm -hmm. just with more reused assets Mm -hmm. like y'all complain that we don't go to these locations and they aren't used and then you're like you're like we want to see these areas used we want to see areas reused you know not just you know be completely forgotten about and then like wait what the fuck Bungie? this isn't what we were talking about we don't want this we don't want them used like this like you can only have so much, guys. Yeah. No. Look, Th- this community. Ever happy I, I'm sorry. Like this okay, community but... has gotten really whiny <laughs> lately. And, dude, I'm 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 lately. seriously at the point where I'm about to be done with like <laughs> Destiny Twitter in general because like I can't I can't do it, man. Just like everything is a reason to complain. Every single thing. And I just. I, <sighs> Well, that's what, 
That, that's so why bad. all my tweets go out through like Buffer or Hootsuite or something, right? <laughs> it's so I bad. Like I, I've Twitter. unfollowed <laughs> almost everybody that I followed in the community. Like I still follow like uh, you know community managers from Bungie and you know a few of the devs and stuff uh, that I like genuinely like I enjoy reading their stuff, whether it's you know Destiny related or not. Um, their stuff, the official Bungie accounts, yeah. of course. But like as far as content creators go, like I've basically unfollowed or muted every content creator i followed except for like maybe three of them at this point mm-hmm. like i still follow datto fallout plays um watts from dcp and astacross and that's about it like everyone else it's just like man y'all cry mm-hmm. about everything i like cool guy i still like cool guy a lot I like cool yeah guy. i think i still f- i follow and by f- yeah i still follow datto I follow Bife. I follow, I mean, yeah. Gathalian, although he's not really Destiny anymore. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's just crazy out there, man. It's crazy. It's just, oh, man. Like, if you hate the game so much, play something else. You have a following. Like, go try something yeah, else. Yeah, that's, that's my whole thing is, like, if you're not enjoying yourself, please, for the love of God, play a different game. Like, it's okay to take a season or two off. The biggest thing that I saw was uh, Bungie issued a fresh wave of bans the other day uh, for net limiters. And one of the players who got caught up in that, er errantly, it should be noted that Bungie's already reversed his ban, was the creator of the website uh, D2 Gunsmith, which I believe A1 Johnny's talked about on the show before. Uh, great resource, by the way, and yeah, great guy, that. great guy who runs it. And uh, he was so hurt and offended by it, like tried reaching Bungie, like nobody talked to him apparently. Uh, so he un- he uninstalled the game and was done. And then the ban got reversed, and he was like, you know, I'm happy it got reversed, even though it should never have been issued in the first place. But he's like, I just, I don't even know if I'm going to reinstall and come back anytime soon. Like, I still love the game, I still love the story, but like, I don't know if I can like actually come back. Like after that happened, I don't want it happening again. Um, uh-huh. and I think like that yeah. was kind of, that was kind of the breaking point for a lot of PVE players. Yeah. I think between that, and the divinity stuff we talked about a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. you know, we, for so long, we framed it as like, Oh, it's just PVP yeah. players that whine and complain about everything. Oh, it's just content creators. Well, like it, it's a little bit different, I guess. And this is something that a lot of us were pointing out. Like it's a little bit different to you guys when it's a resource that you use a lot that suddenly is not going to be updated anymore because of this and that is i that's that's like the equivalent of i won't say it's like the equivalent of losing dim the losing dim would literally be catastrophic for the game at this point for like the hardcore player base and especially for like pc players but yeah oh god yeah there has to be some way to mitigate outrage in the community and save it for things like this that actually matter versus somebody's opinion on a gun when you can just easily ignore that person and rest assured that like 95 percent of the player base does not agree with him that bungie themselves is looking for a different solution than what he suggested and i don't know (laughs) yeah man it just uh i don't know i I try not to get too caught up in all that, but it sometimes it yeah, just you, can't you, help you, it. you can't help it. Um, and I think that's like, like, I've tried to like consciously step back from a lot of the debates on social media and like not wade into them. Like it's not worth my time. I'm just, I have more important things going on than outrage over a video game. So, yeah. Uh, we have one more thing to talk about, though, oh. tonight. One more thing, besides uh, my complaining about Red Border and about people on Twitter. We do. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the Bungie health note Thursday. that was addressed was uh, <laughs> about the ruffians, about how they will no longer uh, they will no longer be um, despawned if uh, you finish throwing everything in while they're out on the field. It's like, well, great. That's like the equivalent of doing the bare minimum. Can you make it to where we don't have to sit around and waste like three minutes waiting for them to show up first? Because they're set on a timer to show up at three and a half and seven and a half minutes. And that's fucking insane. 
that's like that's that's crazy that's crazy that's insane like so many of us uh nerd nerd and i were playing a uh, expedition last week and we were just chucking stuff off the map or like as far away as we could so that our rando wouldn't keep grabbing it and throwing it in. And I'm pretty sure we got reported. Like there were a lot of people saying like, I'm reporting people who are doing this. They're not playing it the way it's supposed to be played. We're like, no, we're trying to get the seasonal title done and you have to kill 50 of these things. 50 of them. You only get two per expedition. If you're lucky, like, holy shit, man, I've probably done close to 50 expeditions and I only have like 25 of these things killed. that's wild yeah Yeah. that's it's crazy it's so it's it's crazy like i saw that and i'm like man i i'm never gonna play enough to do this like i want to play other things you know i want to raid i want to do these other things and like as much as i like the seasonal stuff and like i wanted i wanted to try to get the the seal and and everything it's just like man i don't I don't know if I have the the patience yeah, to do this. Um, this is this is one like I really want to earn it this season. Like, and, and this is part of the debate we were getting into today about these. Also, like, I it's an egregious step. Fifty of those things is absolutely egregious. Over the course of a whole mm-hmm. season, it's probably not bad. I, I keep trying to keep in mind we are one month into the season. We have two months to go. But man, it has been such a slog so far to get those kills. Like. That's the one thing that's going to hold me up from getting the seal basically on day one at this point. Um, and it's not like a race to get it. Um, but I guess the whole point I'm getting at with this is like, I think that's an egregious step. It's certainly the worst thing since like the flawless Seraph Tower that you had to do for uh, Worthy. I mean, that required us doing LFGs and, you know, getting random people who were passing through patrol zones to join us so we could like keep putting more people into the patrol zone. Like we would use random players who came in as anchors right? to the point where there were like ten, nine or 10 of us, like whatever the mm-hmm. max you can get into one zone was in your instance. It, it was crazy. And it's like, we were having to do that. We were still barely yeah. doing it. Um, This is, this feels very mm-hmm. eerily similar to how bad it was. And like, that was in the early days of the pandemic. So like, I wasn't sleeping at night, so I knocked mine out in the middle of the night, like, the week lockdown started. But, man, if I had, like, had a full-time job at the time, I don't know when I would have gotten it done. I don't know that I would have cared. Like, yeah, and that's the thing is, like, I, I we were debating this yeah. in, the, in the Discord earlier, like, are seasonal seals too easy to get? Does Bungie hand out too many seals? And... I, the stance that I finally came down on was I think the seasonal seals are fine to be like not handouts, but like you got to try for them. Like give us some things we got to try on. Like I think this season, one of the ones is good. Like you have to be able to, you have to unlock, you don't have to craft, but you have to unlock three weapon patterns. I think that's a good one that shows you actually put in time to the season and played the ruffian step. I mean, I think even mm-hmm. if you bumped it down to 30, that would be a huge win. Like, that would still be a slog, but it wouldn't be nearly as bad. We wouldn't have to sabotage as many runs here. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Maybe make a requirement, like, run each variant of Catch Crash in, like, under 10 minutes or something. Um, We know one of the challenges is going to be do each expedition under 10 minutes. Things like that. Like, I, I think, like, you should have to at least try yeah. a little bit for the seasonal title. It shouldn't just be a handout. Um, but like keep keep the raid seals where they are. Like the raid seals should be like a pinnacle thing. The PvP titles should be harder to get. Like Iron Lord should be not a handout, but it should be something that just with a lot of time you can earn it. If you're an average player, like you'll earn it over the course of a couple seasons. The Crucible title, like that's tied with comp and stuff, should be harder to get. The Grandmaster title should be harder to get. Yeah. Like. Maybe not than it currently is, but it should be a it should be a challenge mm-hmm. to get to. Like if you want to take the easy way, you can do that, but it's going to take you a few seasons to do it. It's not going to be a it's not just going to be a handout. The ones that I yeah. think have become that are truly handouts, and we only have one seal to judge it by. We can't view the Festival of the Lost seal yet, so I reserve my I reserve the right to change my opinion in two weeks when we see that. But as it stands right now, the Flamekeeper seal is an utter fucking joke. That thing is, uh, oh, yeah. when I was doing it, I knocked out almost the entire seal in one place, in one sitting. 
almost the entire thing in like two, two and a half hours of play. That's insane. I should never have that for a seal. Unless it's like the end of the season and I've just banged everything out in one yeah. sitting. Like to be able to bang out an event an event yeah. one like that, like I'm not I'm not saying like, oh, I should have to play all three weeks like hardcore to get the title. Like I'm just saying, like, damn, make it to where I can't do it in like two hours. <laughs> that's what that's all I'm asking. Yeah. Like those are the ones I think are truly the handouts, and like maybe they should be, but like the seasonal ones, I don't think there's anything wrong with people getting seasonal titles, especially when a lot of those are like the kind of like jokey, like fun titles. Like this week, this season's a scalawag. I love that. I think it's goofy and stupid. Mm-hmm. That's great. But like, yeah, I know. at the same time, reserving something like Kingslayer for doing Kingsfall. Okay, cool. Like reserving, uh, yeah. What, not fate bringer uh fate breaker i think is the uh vault of glass one like those are some of the coolest titles in the game and i fully mm-hmm. understand riven's bane like for last wish like i know i will never get those and that's cool like those are really cool titles so like those titles to me achieve what bungie said they wanted titles to be like when you see somebody with that title with those titles you're gonna go oh my god like you're you're gonna be like seeing them in the tower and be like oh man like they're awesome like, and that's how I feel, you know, when people, when I see people with Flawless title, or when I see them with the, uh, especially the, the Crucible title, with the Unbroken title, um, that's how I feel. Like, those are cool. Uh-huh. I'm excited to see what we get in the future, though, because I think there should be, there should be something simple for the majority of the player base to go earn. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Everybody wants some sort of title. Cool. Even if it's just Roman numerals, you want a title of some kind. But there should be some big boy shit, too. I think they're striking a decent balance. I would just, I don't know. Yeah. I'd like to see something else. Like if there's going to be a one for every dungeon raid going forward. Cool. I like that. They've kind of shifted away from having to have the master or not the master, the um, flawless runs in the uh, raids, at least. Cause I mean, come on, like the wall of dicks, yeah. dude, like I would hate to get that far and have my flawless run spoiled. <laughs> Because of the yeah. world's most annoying jumping puzzle. Oh, man. <laughs> so. <sighs> yeah. I mean, man. Remember remember when Flawless was an achievement in Destiny? I do. I remember killing myself in D2 even oh, to get gosh. the Wayf- Wayfarer title uh, the first year it was up. Um, I was trying to get it the first year it was up. It took me, I want to mm-hmm. say... Did I get, I did get it that first year. I got it that, I got it the first year it was up because I was like, I'm earning one of these damn titles and I'm buying a seal. I'm doing it. And I was able to get the, that was back when they gave you like a full year to earn some of these titles. And I earned the Wayfarer one. Um, Yeah. Side tangent, if they allowed you to still, this is part of my problem. If they allowed you to buy the seal, as long as you had unlocked the title, like they gave you like, the next season or something to buy it i would probably be a lot more relaxed with pounding them out in season like i would 100 percent stand back and be like yeah i'll do a couple ruffians a week i'll finish this up in like december but really yeah. i really like the seal design it's it's literally the, yeah. it's the pirate fly <laughs> like, I, I want it <laughs> i want it it's a problem i know it's cool i know it's super cool it's super cool i uh so I actually uh, the story about um, mm-hmm. flawless and D one. We got we were doing vault, and uh, <laughs> we were doing vault, and we uh, were were we were at Atheon. We were at Atheon, and we killed him. But as we killed him, one of our fire team members died. Oh my died, god! I like, I, I would hole, just like, be like, right I'm done. Di- I'm like, done. Right We're not died. talking anymore. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, the easiest one fun. to do it on was uh, Crota. Yeah. To do flawless on because you just you yeah. did the cheese where you just jumped up the side in the the darkness area, and then you mm-hmm. sent one person across and just everybody else with snipers up above. You just had to survive the shrieker room mm-hmm. is all you had to do. 
that was the hardest thing was surviving the shrieker room or yeah. uh well and when the enemies would spawn in when you started the actual crota encounter but as long as everybody was up in their position you were yeah. okay yeah yeah we just uh i think i think we were gonna try crota but then we were like well i don't want to say i got flawless and mm -hmm. then have to tell everybody we got crota you know we wanted to do it on something that was we felt was more legit i think but also now i would kill to do a flawless run in crota and brag about it so you know different right. time different different part of my life <laughs> all right if we don't have any more thoughts Whatever. on uh, on seals on absurd triumph requirements uh etc let's uh let's go in the lore corner and then get out of here oh, we do have a bunch of questions we, we have I a have bunch four of questions, questions Josh. ready to go i did not get the one yeah, from twitter did you but, get the uh, one from twitter i'm gonna do lore corner while you're getting questions while all you're right. getting that question ready lore corner okay cool or quarter. Uh, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do the one for the. Uh, wow. Spoiler alert! It's from the uh, the treasure beacons that you do. You'll eventually construct a treasure map, and you'll do a final set of uh, puzzles to get it. You get a you get a sparrow out of it and some other gear. Uh, Buka's jolly boat is what you get. Uh, pretty nifty looking pirate themed sparrow. Um. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, catch up with some old friends we haven't seen in a while. Marasov. Queen of the Reef looked expectantly at Petra and waited for an answer. The queen's emissary averted her eyes. My queen, she said, we recovered a vast trove of supplies stolen from us over a period of many years. We have located treasures long thought lost and do not avoid the question, Mara said, her words edged with steel. Petra gritted her teeth. We did not recover the spider, she said. It is believed he sealed himself in a pod and transported himself in one of the very shipments that was intercepted by Aramis's forces. Mara tented her delicate fingers. Between her palms, she formed a tiny trichondetheron of matter resembling rose quartz. She spun the minuscule shape, tracking each of its 30 faces, lining each vertex with a tiny fractual arm that spun off into a curled fern of endless, endless geomet geometric detail. By doing this, she quelled the sudden urge to cleave the Dreaming City in two, a reaction which would have discomfited Petra. Petra allowed herself a measured chuckle, knowing it would draw Mara's furious eyes to her, and it did. It was for the time. It was time for the ridiculous denouncement. We have received word that Spider now resides in the last city, Petra said, daring with a shrug. The tiny crystalline structure abruptly fell to sand between Mara's hands. She cocked her head to the side, unable to hold back her incredulous smile. She shook a finger at Petra. When I want him, Petra brought a fist to her chest and nodded. You need only give the word, my queen. Mara shook her head, boggling at the spider's improbable path. Will crow, she began, but couldn't find the right word to contain the breath of justice she imagined. Petra grinned. I guess we'll find out. So I want to I want to oh. put a pin in this because we're going to read one more piece before we get out of here. Pin it. This comes from uh, Between Stolen Stars. Pin it. Credible threat. Crow leaned against a wooden stool in the dark interior of the ether tank, listening to Spider's wet snores as he do dozed fitfully in his chair. It was the small hours of morning, and the Elixney quarter was quiet Gross. aside from the low chattering of the scattered Elixney guards and the electric hum of Spider's gaudy signage. Crow had slipped easily into the empty bar. He had carefully stuck a knife into the stool beside him, perfectly placed so that Spider would see it when he woke. Spider coughed softly. Crow looked at the big Elixney, took a measured breath, and saw him plainly, as someone sleeping alone in a city of enemies. He looked around the tawdy interior of the bar, decorated with what scraps Spider had managed to bring as he fled the shore for the safety of the last city, where he now survived on the charity of Drifter and Mithrax alone. Crow shook his head with a smile and pulled the knife from the stool before sliding it into its sheath. He was at the doorway before he heard a fizzling noise behind him. Glit materialized in midair. What are you doing? Crow hissed, but the ghost was already zipping towards Spider. Hey! Glint yelled, and Spider snorted himself awake. Glint increased his lights to a dazzling gleam and hovered aggressively before Spider's face. The Elixney recoiled and raised his arms, but Glint wove between them like an angry bee. 
Crow may be too nice to send a message, he shouted, but I'm not. What? Spider-Man, it's before he erupt in a fit of confused coughing. <laughs> We're watching you, Glint snarled, his voice quivering with tension. And if you step out of line, so help me, I I'll deal with you myself. Spider caught his breath and sat motionless as the little ghost fluttered furiously before him. And... Don't! Glint lurched forward and bopped himself against Spider's faceplate with a thunk. You! Crow gl covered his mouth as Glint delivered another ludicrous bonk. The elixir blinked, too shocked to react. Forget it! Glint shouted, his voice breaking. He whirled his shell defiantly before transmitting away, plunging Spider into darkness one more. Crow was still laughing as the pair approached to lift the tower. Glint hung sheepishly in the air. I'm sorry, Glint said. I guess I didn't have to do that. Actually, Crow replied, reaching up to scratch his friend's shell. I think you did. So, uh, not a whole lot, not a whole lot here to unpack, obviously. Not a lot, not a lot of deep stuff. But clearly, Crow is not going to be who Mara expects him to be. At least not right now. And that's surely going to bring some conflict, either next season or in like fall. Um that he's crow is his own person he's not loyal to mara anymore and he has no need to be he has no reason to be he has no connection to her why should he be loyal yeah so uh very curious to see where this development leads us uh not only with mara but with petra as well because i think that petra is uh going to be mm -hmm. fast approaching a choice between doing what's right and what's easy in regards to mara so, because she did not hesitate to ki help kill Aldrin. Mm -hmm. So, and she'll gladly do it again right. if she has to, but even she has to be seeing that Mara's, Mara's a little out there. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, Mara's out there to gain yeah. the best interest for Mara, right? I mean. All right. So. Let's do questions, Corey. Let's do it. I, I saw it. That's, that's why I, I kind of I uh, paused for a second. I saw a light up on my phone. So first question comes to us from Nitro TJ. How do you guys feel about all the Nitro armor we've been getting? For instance, this Hunter Festival of the Lost Armor looks like crap to me. Um, So I, I'm going to say I, I kind of like that we're getting some asymmetrical armor. Like, finally, I, I'm okay with it. I do think it's going to be a little overdone. But in regards to the Festival of the Lost Armor, uh, I do agree that I think it looks bad in the leaked images that we've seen, but I would caution that those are very, like, basic images that we're seeing. Like, that's kind of the equivalent of how they'll show up in, like, the mobile app, which always makes things look bad. Because um, I saw, I, I, I'm referring to the images that we've seen floating around of the Festival of the Lost sets and of the Halloween masks. I think it all looks really bad right now. But that's also how things typically look on the mobile app for me. I'm going to reserve judgment until I actually see the renders of them in a couple of weeks. Um, I do not think they're going to mm -hmm. look as good as they did in the concept oh, yeah. art. The dino armor didn't either. It didn't look bad, but it didn't look like as amazing yeah. as it did in the concept art. And I think that's one of the issues with revealing something so soon as we build up these expectations in our heads. And then when it doesn't live up, it's in our instance of, what the fuck, Bungie? Mm -hmm. This isn't what we wanted. Like, I'm not, it's just, I think it's one of those things like, hey, man, if you think it looks bad, don't buy it. Straight up, don't buy it. But I would also say I want to see it in game right. before I just yeah. go like, ah, nope, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I like the Hunter armor from yeah. the uh, concept art that we got, but I do, I want to see how it looks in game first. I really hope the Titan armor looks good in the Mish because those leaked images did not do much inspiring for me. I want to see what they look like with colors. Yeah. Yeah. I need I need some bright colors. Maybe even oh, like the Guardian. I, love it. I, I want to see a photo finish. Maybe it. changes Maybe like the details on like on the arms or something. Like how how, how like how metallic are we talking yeah. is this armor going to be? Because yeah. that kind of dictates how that shader works. <clears throat> so yeah. uh, TBD. TBD yeah. is my official answer. We'll, we'll see but uh, i do agree like i don't i don't want everything to be asymmetrical yeah but at the same time like i really did want so i really wanted some yeah. badly 
So the Fortnite set is a symmetrical. I'm good with moving on. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my hot take here as a Titan, Josh. I just want a cool armor set. I don't care if it's asymmetrical or not. Okay. I just don't feel like looking like a, you know, walking brick wall with ugly helmets. Walking brick okay. wall. Just give me something cool, something sleek. I'm telling you, man, this armor. I just like I get like I get the Titans are supposed to be like the the character mm-hmm. class that's supposed to take a lot of damage, deal a lot of damage, be real physical or whatever. But like sometimes you can look sleek and agile, you know, and be that and not necessarily like, oh, look how I, I sometimes I feel like it's a contest of how big these shoulder pads are, you know, like which what do they have a bet? Oh, I bet I can get my shoulder pads bigger and in game before you designer guy. You know, gosh, it's like it's like makes makes Samus's shoulder pads look like golf balls. I don't know. Anyways, that's my Titan rant. for Unreal. The Unreal. All right. <laughs> we have four questions from Discord. Uh, first question from Rush Jet. Uh, what new type of cosmetics would you guys like to see? Ship projections, reactive shaders. Gun charms. How would you like to show off your style with a new kind of flair? Uh, I mean, my answer is going to continue being the same from now until the end of time. Guardian apartments. Guardian apartments. I want my trophies yeah, up. I'm, yeah. yeah. Either an apartment. Guardian or a, apartment. Capital either ships. Either an apartment something. or like a like a flat. I would I would actually say like yeah. a capital ship for your clan would be super cool too, and then I would really like that. I think that would be a lot a of fun. Ship. Give me like a sparrow garage and like a personal hangar and stuff. I'm the guardian, and I don't have this. Okay, okay. Um, reactive. Yeah. I could definitely dig yeah. react. I don't care about gun charms. They didn't do anything for me in Halo. They're not. Doing, I'm not focused on what my gun looks like. I'm focused on shooting. Uh, maybe like customizable sights yeah. would be something I would yeah. like. I'd love to put the uh, the sight from the scout up, yeah. from the scout rifle that's uh, up this season. I'd like to put that on pretty much like every ranged weapon I've ever had. Um, mm-hmm. Reactive shaders would probably be the number one thing for me, though. I, I think reactive yeah. shaders could be cool, um, but I don't want like moving shaders. I've seen some very primitive uh, animation of that floating around, like. I don't want to look that goofy. I don't want to look like a fucking disco mm-hmm. ball walking around. I think that the the photo finish shader is just enough. I guess just enough, and it only works in specific instances. Yeah. You know what would be cool, though? You know what would be cool, though, is if, like, you could have your own customizable shader where, like, you could pick four colors and insert it into that square. That would be interesting. They'd happens. absolutely charge That'd for it, but it would be interesting. Oh yeah, no, I I get that, but that'd be super cool. I think that's just my opinion. Unreal. I do remember unfortunately when they were remember. charging for shaders. I do unfortunately remember <laughs> that was that that was an actual thing that happened. We had to buy two vault of glass shaders. That was a thing. Thankfully, they have not redone that since. Um, Joasis asks. If you could only play one D2 raid for the rest of your life, it could not be any remastered D1 raid. Which would it be? Oh, God. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Val's pretty good. Uh, Deep Stone's all right. Uh, I mean... See, I mean, I'm going to go I'm gonna gonna go ahead and say if it's ever appeared in D2. Yet, although I hear Last Wish... Well, oh, any well, any non remastered raid. But, so uh, Scourge of the Past would be eligible here, Corey. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah, but Val is way better than that too. I hear. I hear. Last it is, but like if that was the only raid, raid that I could ever do, I would I never touch another raid again. Point. I like King's Fall. I think it's like the pinnacle yeah. Destiny raiding experience, but if that's the, I don't want that to be the only. If I'm picking one raid that I can only do forever i'm picking one that i enjoy that i think has a decent loot pool that i like the encounters in i like the design of i'm going deep stone here mm-hmm. 
the spacewalk and yeah, the deep, deep the fun. film lullaby and the spacewalk music, are doing a lot of heavy walk. lifting here. But I also like I yeah. like this. Oh, yeah. I like the scanner I, uh, mechanic so and things like that, too. Day, I think it's genuinely unique. Yeah. I, so the other day, a couple, well, a couple weeks ago at this point, we ran Deep Stone. Uh, I ran it with uh, mm-hmm. A1 Johnny, actually. We played for the first time in a long time together. And uh, that was the first time we did the spacewalk without talking. And that was the first time I think I really got immersed in that section of the raid and man if you guys haven't done that like and i i get a lot of people haven't who haven't done deep stone aren't going to want to do the space walk without communicating the first time but like you do that a couple times and then you just don't talk during the space walk it's like it's a ma- it's it's a seriously magical yeah, it's it's great it's some of destiny's best you know what josh you've changed my mind i think some of the best some, some of the some of like the just i wasn't gonna i don't think it. the encounters like are really but, amazing and Tanix being the boss is really underwhelming, but overall, like I like that it attempts to tell a story. I like, <laughs> you know, again the spacewalk, the music. I think it's some of Destiny's best music ever. Um, the loot pool isn't half bad. The design mm-hmm. of the weapons and the armor I think is unique. I really like it all. The whole aesthetic of the crypt. I really wish we got to explore more of it. And fingers crossed that'll be a dungeon eventually. Um, I'm going to keep holding out. I'm going to hold out from now mm-hmm. till the end time. I'll probably still be saying that in like four years. Like, any day now, we're going back to the Deep Stone Crypt. Any day now. Uh, question from Ronnie. Well, which subclass is your favorite we'll and on which character? Also, to add to that, do you think some classes, so, meta notwithstanding, do you think some subclasses are geared more to a specific character? So I, w- I want to address the second question first. Because with subclass 3.0, I'm going to say no. I think before subclass 3.0, absolutely. I think that Solar was definitely thought of as a Warlock thing. Golden Gun notwithstanding, obviously. Um, Arc, I think, was definitely seen as more of a Titan thing. Uh-huh. And Void, I Void was the only one I, I would argue uh-huh. you could see as like all three. Um, because I think that played into the power of fantasy for everyone. Mm-hmm. Stasis, I think Stasis is definitely seen as more of a hunter and warlock thing. Um, I would argue Stasis is probably the closest you can get. Like with the 3.0s, though, I think you can say there is a unique identity to each of those classes. Now, I well, I can't even say Titan Solar doesn't count because I mean, Laurelly on its own has basically saved Solar Titan. In terms of, like, not just, like, in terms of an aesthetic, yeah. an, an aesthetic, but, yeah. like, I think just, like, in terms of playing into, like, that fan, yeah. like, that solar fantasy for Titans. Um, but I, I think Solar Titan might be the only one that doesn't, like, can't argue with, like, Void, you can see it as all three. Arc, I would say you can see it as all three. Solar, you definitely can see mm-hmm. it as Warlock and Hunter. Yeah. Even more so than before. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Titan Titans kind of kind of got shafted yeah. on both uh, Solar yeah, and Stasis and like the identity department, I think, because it's just like big man punch things. Mm-hmm. The the hammers are a neat idea. I think yeah, the hammers I mean, are very cool, yeah. but when I think of Solar, I don't think of a Titan. With Laurelly, that changes a little bit because I think oh, flaming skull helmet. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is though is like. I'm not, still, even, I'm, not even, I'm not even like talking underwhelming. No, I, mean, I think like I'm just the, like talking in terms hammers... of like an identity. Like when I say void, mm-hmm. and I say like what void? What do you? What class do you think of when you think of void? I think you can logically say any of the three. I think the same for arc. See, I, th- I when I when I think void, I think of I think of a nova bomb. See, like, I can't because I've I've spent so many encounters me. with a but. bubble being popped around me. I spent so many encounters shooting a tether out and like having the invisible fantasy of being a hunter and making my teammates invisible and things like that. Like I've had too yeah. much of that to think, Oh, it's only like the last time I thought of void as being uh-huh. only a warlock thing was year one destiny one. Yeah. I think, I think too, like I think too, it depends on how, like, your guardian and how you play mixed with who you play. I, with I guess what they I play just like when I think of stasis, you know, and... I don't think, I don't think of a Titan. 
I think of a I think of a warlock oh, conjuring the ice out of nowhere, or I think of you know the hunters with their little ice knives running right. around. The takeaway is the warlocks can be identified yeah. as every class. Also, the problem with yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, like, it's just the Titan supers are always so mm-hmm. disappointing because they're always, let's go punch things. And then, like, we finally get, like, <laughs> the fact that I'm still running Bubble Titan eight years later as, like, Man, my well, main hey, class listen, is Hunters just with so Celestial sad. Nighthawk, uh, first time, like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it so... was bad. I mean that's it's bad. Uh, yeah. So Corey, favorite yeah. favorite class and subclass. Let's let's answer Ronnie's uh, primary question. Man, I mean my favorite class. <laughs> I mean my favorite class is the Titan. Although I've been dipping my toe in the Warlock, I don't know how I like it, but I always dip my toe in once or twice <laughs> a season with a Warlock, and I'm like. Uh, maybe maybe I can play with this, you know. Maybe I can, uh, you know, throw some bombs and uh, heal some people. And then I'm like, nah, let's punch things. <laughs> so, although the warlock does have that range. So, punch, what about subclass? Like Hit me with your favorite subclass, still. or did you already say it? I mean, here's the thing. I like the idea of a lot of subclasses, but there's really only one that is super effective for me which is the bubble Titan, but I love that I can throw shields and I love that I can throw hammers. It's just, it's not as exciting. As so I'm going to give you a bit of an yeah. unorthodox answer for this one. So my favorite class, obviously is my hunter. There's a reason why I only play hunter. I like the aesthetic. I like the feel. I like the move set. I like all the special abilities. The dot. I rely way too much on the dodge. Now that's part of why I can never go to another class. I love my Solar and Void Hunter. I love my Stasis Hunter. I'm really in love with my Arc Hunter Uh these days. I can rock any of those four classes, no problems. I've got a loadout ready to go. My favorite subclass... Are you ready for this, Corey? Oh, no. Arc I don't know if I am or not, the way you said that. Thunder Crash, baby. Mm. If I could... If I could eat, no, 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 oh, because okay. it says what's your yeah, favorite, not what's okay. the most practical. It's what's my favorite. Supermaning across the map in Crucible is genuinely one of the greatest feelings in a video game. It is so rewarding. The same way that I like dropping a slow yeah. bomb on unsuspecting people, I feel that way with the Thunder Crash, except they can't really do much to prevent it unless they team shoot me. The Nova Bomb, they can run away from. They yeah. can't run away from me. I mean, that. When I'm eating. There's a reason why I only play with yeah. it in Crucible, though, and it's because I'm such yeah. a dog shit playing a Titan in any other mode that I just take. Like, hey, man, Mayhem is up this mm-hmm. week. I'm playing on my Titan this week in Crucible. <laughs> I'm getting that reset this I'm getting my Crucible reset this week. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I, I'm a Titan wow. who, or I'm a hunter who likes to punch things at heart. That's, I mean, that's fair. I just, you know, I mean, this, you could say this literally about any subclass with any set of uh, exotics or whatever, but I just feel like nobody cared about Arc Titan until the Falling Star. I mean, so you say that. It came out, John, you know, Johnny over like, here has been rocking it in Crucible for a while. Oh, okay. it, oh, to be yeah, fair, it was always good in okay. Crucible. Johnny, Johnny is very, <laughs> he's very, he's very unorthodox in terms of. What's well, uh, up? It's, it's definitely not a bad thing. Not that definitely that's not a, bad a bad thing. thing. John, that answer was for you. Let's uh, let's hit this final question, Corey. Tiger Jesus sixty four. Let's is do it, it. Time to bring back the three yeah. of things that make it drop red borders. Yes. Yes, emphatically yes, and yes. specifically it should drop red borders for the current specific season. Yeah, that'd be cool. That that's a great idea. Great. Make idea. it to where I can turn in one three of coins a week I love and that a vendor idea. of my choice for a guaranteed red border. I'd be okay with mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. But also bring back glass needles yeah. while we're at it. Where the fuck are my glass needles at? 
I want glass yeah, needles back. With how hard Discord some of Where these the uh, exotics are to get from the lost sectors, I want glass needles back as a form of bad luck protection. When you're having to yeah. run dozens of times through yeah. a legend lost sector cool. and you're still yeah. not getting the armor drop, that doesn't feel good at all. That's the part of the game I don't like interacting with. Like, yeah. I don't mind doing like a dozen runs. Okay, cool. When I'm above twenty runs, though, that's when it starts getting ridiculous, and I'm like, no, I'm I'm good. No matter how easy it is, I'm I'm good. I'm done. Yeah, <sighs> Corey. Yeah, get me out of here. Yes, sir. All right. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening to Tower Casuals. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen. Uh, join our Discord. Join the Tower Casuals Discord. The link is in the show notes. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tower Casuals. Josh, as always, thank you for your time tonight. I really appreciate you every Thursday night. Twitter at Josh underscore Finn, two ends. And you can find me at I am Corey HD on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review wherever you find this super show. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we love you. Goodbye. We did it. We did it.